Oh my gosh, there's another big fish! <laughs> it looks like a fucking manatee! Southern Wyoming. Yesterday it hailed. Andrew, would you get up and make me a cup of coffee, please? Turn on the heater. Today is a work day and an errand day. I like to try to do my van life errands in my little work breaks rather than taking an entire weekend day to do them. That includes picking up a package, filling up a water tank, doing my laundry, having a shower, which I for sure do on my lunch break because I like to have a long one since I only do it once a week. <laughs> and going to Goodwill to drop off a couple donations, going to Home Depot because it is the store of living in a van. <laughs> And then after work, I need to drive about two hours north, east. I did that as a mirror, but does camera, do cameras do mirrors? It's northeast for me. All right, I got a couple hours of work done. I'm going to hit the road now because my packages have been delivered to the post office. So I'm going to do that and get water and then clock back on to work. Thank <laughs> you. 
first paddleboard of the season and it feels so good. For some reason, I have this aversion to doing a task that will bring me happiness. Like my moonshade, I always kind of regret getting it out, but it literally takes three minutes to put up. There's no reason I should regret getting it out. Same with the paddleboard. I'm like, oh, it's such a pain to get out. It takes 10 minutes to get out of the garage, inflate, and be out on the lake. I'm like, once I'm out here, I love it. I feel like it's pretty common that when you have a to-do list, you put it off and put it off and procrastinate. And then once you actually do it, it takes 15 minutes, you know? Why are humans like this? Why am I like this? Is there like Loch Ness Monster in here? <gasps> All right, let's hit some of the questions you guys asked me on Instagram. What was your biggest fear of starting van life and has that changed? I think my biggest fear was being concerned that I wouldn't like it. Um, and no, <laughs> that has never happened and it has not changed. I love it. What's your least favorite thing about living in a van on the road? Hmm. Two things come to mind. Trying to get reliable internet and all of the errands and projects that you have to do nonstop. I was just telling a friend the other day, when I lived in an apartment, I felt like I was so lazy on the weekends. I would sit around and watch TV all weekend. And now I feel like I'm doing projects all weekend, every weekend. Oh, the next question. What is your one favorite thing about living in a van? Bloody this. Look at this. This is my front yard. My house is right there. It's crazy. What have been your best and worst ideas when it comes to the van build? Mm. Best idea was hammock chair. Worst idea was... I legit do not know. I fucking love my van build. <laughs> and I nailed it. Oh my gosh, I'm beached. Beached. All right, watch this. <laughs> Surfing. Surfboard. Surfboard. Worst idea. Literally nothing is coming to mind. That's cool. How does being on the road affect your quality of life? You know, I've told several colleagues this, that I feel like for the first time in my life, I have a proper work-life balance. I tend to, when I was going to the office and um, just organically, I... What the f is that? There's big things in this lake. Something just touched the surface that I swear is like six feet. Oh my gosh. Is there like Loch Ness Monster in here? <sighs> oh yeah, quality of life. I feel like when I was in the office, I was just organically a leader of social events. And so most of my evenings and frequently on weekends, because we had a lot of our Australian colleagues come up to visit, I would be doing work-related things. And it definitely was not the most healthy thing in the world. So now I feel like I actually have a life outside of my job and I love that. What's the most awkward interaction you've had with someone while on the road? <laughs> For sure when I was on the Oregon coast and I had a cassette toilet still, I had my slider door open and literally nobody had walked past my slider all day long, but I, had to go to the bathroom just number one is all i did in that toilet but i slid out the toilet and started going and it's behind my cabinet so you can't really see you just think i'm sitting on something and somebody did walk by and they started talking to me while i was sitting on the toilet and it was so awkward i had to end up telling them look like i'm going to the bathroom right now can i have some privacy <laughs> so uncomfortable probably more so for them than me but definitely for both of us Does your head get itchy when you have a gap between washing your hair? 
I wouldn't say itchy, no, but smelly. Yeah. Was it hard to get used to using the bathroom and showering in the middle of nowhere? I have discovered since van life that I have poo anxiety, for sure. When I have to like schedule and plan when I'm gonna go number two, it, um, it is very difficult for me. <laughs> so that has been a struggle. Have you tried any form of dating or companionship living on the road? I'm not sure what companionship living is. Dating, yes. I've been on dating apps. <laughs> like forever more just for entertainment probably than like meeting people but um i've definitely met a few people on the road nothing extremely significant i've never had a successful relationship come out of online dating how long can you go off grid probably a couple of weeks i would run out of groceries first my water can last about three weeks solar is indefinite um so it's really like fresh produce that i end up missing I really like your tattoo. Can you share the design? Do you have more? I don't know which tattoo you're talking about. I have four. So yes, I have more. Um, I have one on my hip that I got after my divorce. It says que sera, sera. I have one on my rib cage that I got when I was traveling a lot internationally. It's the Dr. Seuss, oh, the places you'll go hot air balloon. I have one on my shoulder here that I got two days I think before I moved back from Australia it is all native Australian plants one of my friends who is a graphic designer designed it for me and each one of the plants represents one of the lessons that I learned there and then I have one on my finger which I do not tell people what it means because it is personal do you smoke weed or eat edibles very very rarely I'm really an alcohol gal if you think I didn't bring a refill you don't know me hey get off Boop, 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 boop. Boop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> did you not enjoy living in Australia? I did not enjoy living in Melbourne in particular. Australia is beautiful and if I had been able to work remotely back then, I wouldn't have chosen Melbourne. At least what I experienced, it was very much a go out, drink, dance, party kind of lifestyle and that is clearly not my vibe. Have you always been adventurous? Yes. I grew up out in the country with dirt bikes and horses and tire swings and tree forts and like making mud pies and going on adventures with my brother. I have always, have always been adventurous. This is from a personal friend that says, do you think in a different world you and I could have been on the road together? And my answer to you is, wink. You can't see under my sunglasses, but yes. Does your ex follow you on Instagram? My ex. I assume you're talking about my ex-husband and I don't believe so. He is aware of my Instagram, but I don't think he follows it. Mm, I don't know. Are you going to meet up with Brian asking for a friend? Why are you asking for a friend? Why, do you want to meet up with Brian? Are you and Brian not together anymore? Update on Brian. <laughs> no, Brian and I are not together anymore. Watch my last video to talk about that. I will probably meet up with him again in the future though. We're good friends. Yeah, totally. Have you always not wanted to have children? No, I made up that decision about two years ago after breaking up with somebody because he was going too slow in the relationship. Eh, ironic. I felt like I had this, you know, biological clock ticking that if I wanted kids, I needed to have a relationship that was going somewhere. And I had this trip to Bali planned with him, but we broke up like two weeks before. So I actually flew my sister down and my sister and I went to Bali together. And on that trip, she was like, Brenda, why are you getting rid of things in your life that currently make you really, really happy for something you potentially might want in the future? She's like, keep living your life as if you don't want kids. And if you do want kids, you can always change that. You know, you can freeze your eggs, you can adopt, there's all these different options, but don't lose out on a really, really good guy because of an if or a maybe or a might. And once I made that decision to not base my life around potentially wanting kids, getting rid of that sort of expectation made me realize that I don't think I actually want them. Like it was this weird shift I don't know that I can thoroughly explain it, but I feel so comfortable and confident with the decision to not have children. 
How do you keep your skin so nice? I fight acne. Mary Kay, the clear proof line. I flip and love it. I've been using it for eight years now. When I lived in Australia, it was hard to get. So I tried switching off of it and I immediately broke out. Like painful, painful, horrendous teenage acne. That is what I have when I don't use Mary Kay. I do distribute it. So if you want some, let me know, but like zero pressure. What do you think retirement will be like for you and when? When is ideally within the next 10 years. Again, a lot of factors can change that depending on, you know, the property I buy and the house I build and if I find a partner who is either more or less financially stable than I am. Um, but at this point, eight to 10 years, hopefully. And what is it gonna look like? Uh, probably this. Probably this. <laughs> No, I want to have property, I want to have a garden, I want to have animals, I want to travel abroad a lot, like potentially almost all the time. I love being overseas and experiencing other cultures and food and language. Oh, love it. So ideally that. Where internationally would you love to travel next? Spain. Have you ever thought about being bisexual or lesbian asking for a friend? <laughs> Yes, I have thought about it, but no, unfortunately I am not. I do find women attractive, but I have zero desire to touch them. Sorry. How do you deal with anxiety? Not well. Nah, I have a really anxious stomach, but I try to work on breathing and getting perspective on the situation. Like trying to analyze what's the worst that could happen. What am I actually freaking out about? Likely nothing is the worst that could happen <laughs> like you freak out about the dumbest thing all right that's all the questions my original intent actually was to share my story of how and why i got on the road but i feel like all those questions take up a lot of time so maybe i'll share the how and why in my next video so stay tuned for that All right, tonight for dinner, we're gonna make some fried garlic chicken ramen. I'm gonna spruce it up with some veg and chicken, of course. but I cooked him up a chicken breast too. It's all warm and waiting for him. Come on, buddy. Good boy. All right, I'm gonna get in bed and eat a feast while I watch This Is Us. I'm watching it mainly because there was a lot of hype around it and I feel like everybody says that they love it. I personally am uh, not sold. So let me know in the comments below if you like the show or not. Cameras, you know, YouTube live. 